Inside Out. Inside Out is presented by HTC. This is life. Connect with it. And Magnolia's at 26th for good old-fashioned Southern comfort food where mama eats. Along with the McGuire Law Firm. Be kind today and tomorrow. Welcome, friends. This month on Inside Out, we're going to meet an opera singer who's also a gymnastics coach. We're going to meet the president and CEO of the Gullah Geechee Chamber of Commerce. And we're going to visit with an artisan who makes wooden bow ties. Plus, we've got a horse farm, Grand Strand Brewery, and Giving Hope Gardens. And did you know that there is now an evening farmer's market in our area? Well, I got the scoop. This month, June, Inside Out. We're in Conway today at Rivertown Cabinetry. With Father's Day and graduation coming up, I thought I'd give you some good ideas about maybe purchasing something made of wood. How about a wooden bow tie? This man has created just that. This is Wesley Branton. And Wesley, when did you get into woodworking? I got into woodworking when I was just a young boy, uh, mostly in about middle school and had a great shop teacher and just encouraged me in, in woodworking and uh, he made it to a, a love affair with doing things with wood. So I've really put, pretty much got it from just at an early age. Well, before we talk about your hobby, let's talk about your job and Rivertown Cabinetry. What do you all do here? Yes, um, we build custom cabinets. I've uh, been in business for 24 years and um, we have uh, have humble beginnings and then we're extremely busy with uh, with what we're doing and we just love building cabinets. Oh, and so many other beautiful things. For instance, this piece right here, you tell me you're turning this into a desk. Yes. And even though this I know is wood, what is this? Uh, this is an epoxy resin and I can take it, it's clear and I can take it and tint it in many colors. And this is for a particular customer for a desk and she's requested blue. It is just beautiful. And yet you tell me that this wood and this wood here is the same thing. That's right. The exact same wood came off the same tree. Uh, the only difference is, is this is uh, has a finish on it that uh, just brings out the natural beauty of it. And this just has no finish yet. It's still uh, incomplete. I love so many of the things that you've created around here. And before we talk about the wooden bow ties, mm -hmm. I love this radio over here that you tell me actually works. Yes, it's. Uh, I kind of styled it after a uh, retro looking radio. It is. And so uh, it's a Bluetooth speaker and you can easily connect it to your phone or other device that you have and uh, you can listen to your old oldies but goodies on that. I worked in radio back then. <laughs> I recognize that. And these clocks and they really work. Yes, I got um, a clock that's uh, all of its wood gears, wood pendulums and it keeps great time and if people listen hard enough they might even hear it ticking and another one is a wall art it just makes geometric patterns and you're able to enjoy just watching it go folks can come here to rivertown cabinetry to purchase any of this but mm. if you decide you want a wooden bow tie you got to go to the haberdashery and that's right around the corner but tell us a little bit how you got into this uh, this is a good interesting uh, part at least to me but um my grandfather was a huge bow tie wearer, and he loved uh, just bow ties. Never saw him in anything else. And so uh, my son, when he got old enough to start wearing bow ties, uh, he said, Dad, you gotta make, start making wear, wearable bow ties out of wood. And I said, uh, I don't know if I can do that, but we'll try it. And he really encouraged me to go along with it and had a few unsuccessful attempts. And then uh, we kind of hit off on this one and he's been wearing them and that's all my son wears as well. Even though he's 19, he still, that's all he wears. Well, I mean, they're beautiful. And for people who are wearing them, yeah. for the guys who are wearing them, they don't look wooden. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. What is that down front that you said is something new that you're making using pine cones? Yes, um, this is in the rough. And what it is, is uh, I take resins and uh, I take stabilized pine cone and I put it in a mold and I take the uh, resin 
and pour it into the little mold and I pressurize it and several hours later it comes out and I trim it up and it's in its rough stage ready to be made to a bow tie. So I try different mediums and see how it works and see I can, if I can make things not only out of wood but out of resin and resin and wood and, and pine cone and pine cones actually do real well in them. How are the bow ties actually attached to a man's shirt? Okay, the bow ties are just like a regular standard bow tie that you would get in any store. It has a neck band uh, and an actual clasp with an adjustable hoop on it. And my wife actually makes those for me. And um, so we, she sews them up for me, um, gets them all ready, and then uh, gets them. It has a little teeny, what I call a bridge in the back, and that's what the actual neck band goes into that holds the whole tie together. And then you've got a bow tie up there uh, over your shoulder that's, um, you yes. tell me, Conway colors. Yeah, it's green and gold, and um, the pine cone, actually, that one came from Conway High School. I went to Conway High School and started picking pine cones and used that to... Uh, it's a story behind the tie kind of thing, and then I did green and gold because that's Conway Colors. So tell us why the haberdashery is the only place that's selling them for you. I think it's a nice friendship story. Yes, um, we got to meet the, uh, the folks at haberdashery uh, years ago when we were doing cabinets for their apartment building. And uh, we've struck up a friendship ever since, and um, Tracy and Russell, the owners, told me, said, you need to start selling those here. and so. I've been taking them to them and they sell them for me and uh, pretty much they're the only ones that sell them for me because we, we got a good friendship and a good relationship together as a business and um, they really help me in a lot of ways. They encourage me and just feel like there's nothing I can't do with them. So Wesley, what about people who have a piece of wood laying around that maybe has been passed down or something made from wood that they need refinished? Do you do things like that? Well, what we do is um, there's been requests at times that a customer will say, you know, my granddad planted this tree and now it fell in the yard or this is something that came from one of my best friends. Uh, can you do something with it? And uh, there's been times that we've been able to make a clock or make a mantle or something that means something special to them. And it gives them a story behind the story. It gives something that they can enjoy for maybe a long time legacy from time to come. Uh, by the way, Diane, we'll start offering classes in the fall for woodworking and we'll start making pens. So if you're interested, give us a call. And so remember, if you would like to have a great graduation present or Father's Day present, hit the haberdashery. If you want something made from wood, it's, of course, Rivertown Cabinetry. That's right. Thank you, my friend, Thank Wesley. Thank you so much, Diane. Terrific. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to meet you. Same here. Coming up, horsing around at the Rocksmith Farm in Forest Brook. As fellow community members, HTC knows the precious value of family time spent together. That's why HTC delivers faster speeds, 24-7 local tech support, and free Wi-Fi. No matter where the day takes me, HTC serves up the world-class high-speed internet you need to stay connected to your world. Because you are here, and so are we. High-speed internet starting at 300 megabits per second and up to one gig for as low as $49.95. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. This segment of Inside Out is brought to you by Magnolia's at 26th for good old-fashioned southern comfort food, where mama eats. Every day that I get to talk to a cowboy, and this is the best there is, and he happens to live here in Myrtle Beach. But we're here on a farm in Forest Brook. It's Rock Smith and Rock Smith Farm. 
and I've known Rock for years. He is an incredible man, loved and respected by so many people. Rock, thank you for doing this interview with me. You're welcome, I appreciate it. I want to know about the history of this farm. I really thought it had gone back many generations, but I heard not recently. No, it hadn't. Uh, we started here in the farm and started buying property in 1970. And uh, of course we had to clear it all and all that. So it took quite a few years. You were out in the sticks back then. There was nothing out here back then, nothing. It was just, we've called it the boondocks. And we, I said, you know, I was down on 10th Avenue between 10th and 21st before and of course everything started building up out there so we moved out here where nothing would ever build up but that didn't happen either but we've been here all through the years tell my sister and i actually ran the farm for a good while tell people what you actually do here it's more than just horses it is more than just horses we uh of course we board and uh we work some cattle. We've got cattle here and all, and we work some of the cutting horses with the cattle. And uh, we do uh, certain lessons at certain with certain people and all that too. At this stage and age, we're basically a boarding barn. I know your daughter Pebbles is involved with you, and of course you have instilled in her a love of horses as well as her daughter Summer. And we see them out here riding horses all the time. Yes, they they love it, and they came up doing it, both of them. So, you know, she hauled on the road, my daughter hauled on the road with me for a long time when she was very young and has continued to do it to the day. And both of them have won ribbons and state awards and national awards and it's, it's amazing. They've done very well. It's all in their genes. That's right. Horses have been good to them. But horsing around has been in your genes too because wasn't it your grandfather that had pony rides down at the pavilion? My grandfather had a uh, pony ride at the gate off in Park in the 50s. And of course he passed away. And then my uncle took it over and ran it during the 60s. I worked at the gate often from the time I was 12 years old till I graduated high school in uh, 18 years old. Well, working for Justin Plyler must have been a dream. It was. And the uh, highlight of everything was running that wild mouse down there for uh, a good number of years. And I bet all those screaming girls, I bet you liked I did. calming them down. I did. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were like a teenager at that point. I Weren't you running teenager. that? Yes. Rock, let's talk a bit about the equestrian center that the county's talking about. What do you think that would mean for the county? Well, I think actually it would mean quite a bit of money for the county. There's nothing down on the, on the coastline anywhere. The closest center that we have now is in Clemson, and it's a T. Garrison Arena there. Uh, the impact of horses here in uh, South Carolina there's 73,000, over 73,000 horses. And the impact on the state is $1.9 billion. So, and that creates tw over 28,000 uh, jobs, which totals out around a billion dollars in paychecks. There's probably a, a, a need, you know, I don't say it just has to be strictly horses, but there's other things that can you know, can be brought in too with it in an arena. And inside. you know this well because years ago, tell us about your involvement in Georgetown County and how successful that was. Well, uh, at Greenfield Plantation, um, we had an arena with 60 stalls to it. And we did the major largest horse shows in the state then at that time. And we also did country western shows and had singers come in and, and all, and uh, it was really successful. It, we had a Western store, we had a cafeteria, and, and we just out seven miles from Georgetown on, on 701, there really wasn't anything out there. But we had a uh, real successful operation going on there. We had 250 head of Angus cattle, mm. and w at times we would have 100, over a hundred horses there. We had a youth camp for kids and uh, we just stayed busy. 
we did a lot with Tara Hall, and uh, it worked out real well. So something like that really could be mimicked here in Horry County. It could be, yes. Now, you, of course, have traveled the world with um, Dolly Parton Stampede, and uh, what was that like? That was an experience. Through my life, I've been able to deal and, and have good people to help me through the way and uh, different things. I gained a lot of knowledge from that also. And uh, traveling in airplanes to Branson, Missouri, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Orlando, Florida, you know, and different things and doing all the horse things and opening all the facilities changing the facilities over from the Christmas show to the main show, uh, doing the patterns for the horses and putting the people together with it. You know, it was just so exciting and rewarding to see all that come, you know, to pass. But when you first started out, you were just with the horses and the next thing you know, you're running the whole show all over the- I, I started out as a production manager here in Myrtle Beach in uh, 1992. And then it did, I went in, just kept climbing and doing more and doing more um, and became a equestrian, corporate equestrian person for all the facilities. And uh, it was quite an experience, loved it. And I bet you loved working with Dolly. I did. I drove her around in wagons and opened up facilities and all that, so we, <laughs> I did. I was I was very fortunate to be able to to do what I was able to do. And then you had Pebbles working there as well. She worked there for a while. She sure did. Putting on some pretty good um, tricks there. And yeah, she was. Uh, I tell you, that started. I ran out of help one day, and I had called her up. And I said, "Hey, you got to get down here." <laughs> and she did, and went right in the show and did well. Speaking of wagons, during the COVID period when you were, were not out and about like most of us, you didn't just sit around. Tell everybody what you were doing. Well, I uh, I redid a lot of buckboard. I did a buckboard. I built a uh, chuck wagon. I redid uh, three sleighs and uh, different wagons. I just worked on those over in the garage and uh, kept me busy. Yeah. And it kept but, me from being around people. But you've done a really great job. So, Rock, a lot of times people go up and down Forest Brook Road and they see the name of the street, What You Think. And they think, well, what were they thinking when they named a street What You Think? You've got the story. That's true. There's a lot of people that, that ask that question. And the road is named after a racehorse that we had back in the 70s who... Uh, we actually won the uh, Florida Triple Crown Derby with this horse in 1974. And then we carried him on to be a AAA AQHA champion, which are very few. There's not but a handful of those horses out of the three million and some that quarter horses that are registered. So we were very proud of him. He did a real good job. We uh, actually leased him to a farm after he won the race in Orlando for 11 years. And that was very, very good. And then of course, you've been involved with other winning horses along the way. Or maybe I should say, they've been involved with you. Yeah, well, we had uh, quite a few back starting at Greenfield. We had uh, world champion, hard to beat, uh, Lady Gaines, Snips Dowdy. Uh, we had some really good horses back in the day. And we've actually uh, shown all over the country with these horses. And uh, we've just been, horses have been very good to us. You've been very good to horses, let's say so. too. Now, what about the future? I know that Pebbles is excited about following in your footsteps and continuing the legacy, but what are your thoughts, Rock? Well, my thoughts are, we've managed to keep this farm all through the years and people come by and want to buy it about once a month. And it's not for sale. And it will be up to them, to Pebbles. And Summer can decide what they want to do with it later. Uh, it's, there's a lot of work involved here. And I'm sure that they'll be able to carry it on. And uh, their love for the farm is great. 
your love for the farm has been great and your love for the county has been great. And so many people have said to me that no one knows more about horses than you, Rock. Well, I've had a lot of good help down the way. A lot of pe good people have helped me. And I try to give that back. I really do. And if it wasn't for the uh, help that I got from really good, successful people all over the country, uh, they were good. They were good to me. Thank you, Rock. Thank you for this great interview. You're quite welcome. Thank it you. is Rock's Farm, and I've got to tell you, every time you pass by on Forest Brook Road, blow a kiss, because it doesn't get any finer than this. <laughs> Thanks, Rock. Thank you. Meet Marilyn Hemingway with the Gullah Geechee Chamber of Commerce next on Inside Out. Proper serving, proper distancing. We're into safety at Magnolia's. Our staff now plates your food with all your favorite choices from the buffet, salad bar, and dessert bar. And it's still all you can eat. There's also breakfast, evening, and an expanded Sunday buffet. Mama says she can't cook it that cheap. Plus, the kids will love the yummy ice cream machine. Name Small Business of the Year by the Chamber of Commerce. Magnolia's. It's where Mama eats. The beaches are packed. Folks from all over the world are coming to see what our area has to offer. Welcome to Georgetown. We're on a rooftop so that you can see Georgetown's best parts. Of course, the water is part of that. Joining us right now is Marilyn Hemingway. She happens to be not only the CEO of the Gullah Geechee Chamber of Commerce, but also the founder and has recently won an outstanding Trailblazer Award for doing just that, for founding this organization. But you're from Georgetown. Yes, I am. This is home for me. Even though you grew up all over the world, I understand. Well, I'm an Air Force brat, but I am definitely um, a Georgetown native. My family's been here for generations. As a matter of fact, my family is from up and down the coast. My father is Ori, Georgetown counties, and my mother is Beaufort, Charleston, um, Hasper. Jasper and Hampton. Hasper, I don't know where that one came from. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been all over, and, and you even have some connections to the former Myrtle Beach Air Force Base. Yes, I was born in Myrtle Beach Air Force Base, so that is dating me a little bit. Um, it no longer exists, but I was born at the hospital at Myrtle Beach Air Force Base. So why have you taken time out of what could be uh, doing something else to form this chamber? Two reasons. It's it's the culmination of my professional journey and my personal journey. And my personal journey is really, it's an appreciation of who I am, Gullah Geechee, Gullah, and having that understanding of being the descendants of enslaved Africans and African Americans who came from the worst of conditions and they survived and that allowed me to be here. And in my professional journey, it's a combination of um, my degree in journalism, but my experience in event planning, working in corporations, and I came back home 
to be with my father because he was getting older, my parents, both of them. And, um, and I wanted to work for myself. And so I became an entrepreneur. And that's, I said, what can I do that gives back to my community, but also allows me to retire one day? <laughs> and making a difference, big yes. time. Yes, I hope so. I hope it is making a difference. So what are the goals of the organization? And also the fact that people would think this would come out of Charleston. But you have a good reason why it needed to be here. That's right. So let me tell you first about the mission. Our mission is to raise global awareness, profitability, and sustainability of African-American businesses and other entities in the Gullah community. Our advocacy is for environmental justice, addressing climate change, and education about career and business opportunities in green renewable energy. But why Georgetown? because Georgetown is the epicenter of the rice culture and has my good friend Zenobia Harper says they made the money in Georgetown, but they spent it in Charleston. But it is here where there were over 300 plantations and the direct descendants are still living here. It is through the knowledge the enslaved Africans had, our ancestors of controlling the water and managing the land that grew the rice. And that understanding makes all the difference. So what are your future plans, Marilyn, for this organization? To expand the programming that we already have. And some of those programs are the, we just recently finished the 2021 International Gala Film Festival. And our plans for that is to expand it to two weeks across the entire county of Georgetown. But recently, we also received a grant from the Climate Reality Project to restart the Gullah Geechee Environmental and Energy Conference because we really want our community to understand green renewable energy, but also the impact of the environment, what's going on with climate change, and the opportunities that are presented for the future. So we decided to do the environmental and energy conference to educate and also to bring different resources together. And then of course, grow the chamber, grow our membership and present more opportunities for our members to grow their businesses. And we have a lot of small businesses and startups. So we're going to be introducing educational classes in partnership with some of our educational organizations to help them be better at being a business, doing the business of business. Well, of course, networking is one of the most important things. Exactly. And just everybody being a member together will be helpful. And finally, you've received this Trailblazer Award, mm -hmm. and I can certainly see why, because you're so <laughs> proactive. And then also, the uh, Post and Courier has featured you in a wonderful article featuring the top 12 black leaders of our state. Mm -hmm. And I can certainly see, and and understand why you deserve this recognition, Marilyn. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate the recognition, the awards. I don't do it for the recognition. I do it because I love my community and I do it because I see opportunity. And we do have opportunity in Georgetown and beyond because the plans are to expand the chamber beyond Georgetown, across the entire low country, South Carolina coast, but also into Georgia, Florida, and up to Wilmington, North Carolina. Well, everyone can certainly see why you've won these awards. There's no doubt about it. And whatever you've done so far, you've only just begun. I agree with you. And thank you, Diane, for having me. I really appreciate it. And if anyone wants to support us, just reach out to us. But you know, I'm deeply appreciative of the, the awards and the recognition, but this is just the beginning. And if we work together, and, and to address the issues facing our society, we will all benefit. But this is just the beginning, and I certainly appreciate receiving those awards. My new friend, Marilyn Hemingway. Thank you, Marilyn. Bravo. Thank you. You might call him culturally athletic. Meet gymnastics coach and opera singer, Jason Collins, after this break. I'll adjust the thermostat. It's getting a little cool. Mom, you don't have to get up to do that. I've installed the HTC Connected Home app on your phone. See, you can adjust the temperature from anywhere. Okay, Mom, I've got to go. Thanks for house sitting. Make sure to lock the door and set the alarm. No problem. I have everything I need right here. HTC Self Install Kit, $0 with 36 month monitoring commitment. 
HGC. This is life. Connect with it. So what do you get when you combine an opera singer with a gymnast? I know that's a weird combination, but you get this guy. This is Jason Collins, and we're here on the campus of Coastal Carolina University, where Jason will soon be teaching voice in September. How exciting. But I mean, what came first in your life, music or athletics? I would say music came first in my life, definitely. I can remember as a child being outside, um, probably about three or four years old, the Star Wars had just came out. And I came in to ask who was playing the Star Wars, con the Star Wars um, record back then, for people who still remember what records are, right? Um, and no one was. And I was hearing it in my head, and I thought someone was playing it. And so the music was there. Um, at that early age. How old were you? About three. Wow. And uh, three, couldn't be more than three. And I can remember that distinctly. And then you fast forward, and then you're being raised in, in, in church, in Southern Baptist Church at that point. And uh, so you get to learn and sing all the hymns. But I got up on stage, I was asked to sing a song. Uh, and I just got complete stage fright and ran off the stage, ran out of the church. Just, and I have no idea. Well, I'll figure that out one day <laughs> with many more therapy sessions. But yes. I'll. And now, of course, you've performed on stages all over the world singing opera in his cowboy boots. What did people think? Well, when I made my um, Lincoln Center debut, <laughs> my agent was like, I cannot believe you have cowboys on, darling. I was like, well, how did my voice sound? Uh, that's right. It's about my yes, voice, not my yes, feet. Yes, and but this is me. This keeps me grounded. And everywhere I would go, that was the first thing I would do when I would step off a plane in Israel or Rome or any place. I took a picture of my foot and my shoe just to prove I walked on that part of the earth. As accomplished as you are, as an opera singer and have sung on stages all over the world, you're equally as accomplished as a gymnastics instructor. Tell us about some of the people you've worked with. I, I, I am blessed beyond reproach. I, uh, in 2014, I uh, was asked to come down to World Champion Center in Texas. They were building um, a young lady by the name of Simone Biles, oh. who I believe that everyone might know. Yes. And so I came down there in 2015 to start running their elite men's gymnastics program. They wanted to build that. But at that point, we were getting Simone ready for the Olympics. And so I got to, I coached Simone on, with, on floor exercise and uneven bars all around, really. But then you did go on and, and created a, a, an athletic program there. Um, well, we did. Well, after, once we knew Simone was secured, um, I moved to Florida and opened up Evo Athletics. Um, and then Amy Boardman, when the Olympics was over, came to be my business partner there. Cool. And then when the scandals of the USA Gymnastics hit, uh, and they closed the ranch. We got together with Johns Hopkins Children's Hospital with USA Gymnastics, and our facility that we built and designed became the National Training Center through the next World Championship cycle. And so I got to work with, be there and see all the national team members and send them off to Doha and sing the national anthem for them that no one had ever done. And, who gets to do that? It, you do. A I, little kid who grew up between Beaufort and also Pendleton and Seneca area. I mean, these were your home bases when, if I'm not mistaken, male gymnastics wasn't even a thing back then. It was a thing, but it was certainly one thing in Pendleton. Uh, and <laughs> um, that was, that's it. I've just been blessed with people who, you know, the balance beam. No one told me that only girls did that. So I took a four by four and two saw horses and built myself a balance beam in my backyard and learned to flip on it. And Wait. we're good, yeah. I don't know how it's good, but 
maybe <laughs> stupid, you know. But I was just blessed with these kind of teachers who allowed me to give me a voice, to give me the right to do this before inclusion was a big thing, which it is now. And that really brings me to where you are now, and that's the fact that you're teaching voice in the fall here at Coastal Carolina University. Yeah, How so exciting. Excited. But you also have a job coaching gymnastics in Carolina Forest. I do. Um, Sally Thomas was um, in a time of this COVID and time of everything because she's a great businesswoman. She was a collegiate gymnast. She's been doing this for a long time. And she has a whole day school all the way through. Thomas Gymnastics. Thomas Gymnastics at the beach. And where people are backing away and people are not fun, they're funding girls' athletics because you don't see men's athletics, which is the lost art because they don't mature until their 20s, but you've got to grassroot them. So she was in a, in a time, in an economical time where it wouldn't be, she at least had the business and the passion for it to get, let me grassroot this program. And, since January, I now have 10 boys on a gymnastic team that are ages six through nine, and you gotta kind of find your balance, but they're strict. They stand in line, and they're orderly, and they have respect for the sport. And I'm just so blessed that Sally and Thomas Gymnastics has offered me that and allowing me to come here to Coastal Carolina with Jeff Jones and, and, and Tim Cook, all these people, wonderful people, and now offer me an you know, adjunct voice faculty position where I'll have students next semester. And, and, and it's just been serendipitous. And I, guess, and I guess that would be your legacy. You want to make sure you give back, huh? To that's it. people like so that's, many have given to you. That's it, because had somebody not walked in and said, you've got something special, you can do this, do it to the best of your abilities, don't compare and really you have to drive those kind of things home we always compare we always want to be better do what, the best with what you have and then you can walk away with pride and but somebody's got to see that in you and if Diane McFarland at Seneca High School did not see that in you in me I'd probably be some hillbilly with high top flip flops or something running around in the mountains of South Carolina. No, you wouldn't. You'd be wearing those cowboy boots. <laughs> All right, to end, I want you to sing a song that is poignant for you, something that means something to you. I want you to sing it to me. All right, it's a song that most people think of a sad song, but the words are quite beautiful and a very recognizable song, so. Go for it. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From glen to glen and down the mountainside. Jason Collins, opera singer and gymnastics teacher here in our community. God bless you. Have a long stay here, and I know you're going to do great things. I can't wait. Bravo. <music> Giving Hope Gardens is doing just that. We're headed to Loris right after this. As fellow community members, HTC believes in helping friends and neighbors protect what matters most. With integrated home technology, I can control my home and security system from my smartphone. HTC security makes my job easier and keeps my world running smoothly. No matter where the day takes me, HTC brings reliable, world-class security right here to Ori and Georgetown counties because you are here, and so are we. Upgrade your security with a video doorbell from HTC. HTC. This is life. Connect with it. This segment of HTC Inside Out is presented by the McGuire Law Firm. Be kind today and tomorrow.
several years ago, we came to this very location and introduced you to this beautiful garden. But of course, at that time, it was just dirt and concrete, giving hope gardens in Loris. I want you to meet Kyle, who happens to be the founder of this organization. Cavallini, right? Yes, ma'am. I love that name. Tell me about what you do for a living. Oh, I'm a special education teacher here in Horry County. I've been here the last 18 years teaching on various levels of high school all the way down to elementary school in the field of special education. And I guess that's what led you to become the co-founder of Buck Creek Foundation, which is kind of the umbrella organization over this one. Yes, ma'am. Just uh, seeing what I thought was a need in our community and in our county of uh, young, young adults leaving and aging out that uh, had special needs and trying to offer programs for them uh, just like any other student would, whether you know that student was going into the military or into tech school or college. I thought that uh, individuals with special needs should also have offered to them different types of things that they could do when they left. You told me, Kyle, that so many times you run into kids that you taught at Daisy or somewhere else in the county. I know you've taught at North Myrtle Beach and other places, and they're special needs students, and all of a sudden they're doing nothing but sitting at home in a rocking chair. Yes, ma'am. A lot of the uh, students you would see that uh, didn't have disabilities seemed like they were doing a lot of things, uh, and they were great things. And then I would see the other side of that coin with students that I had taught or worked with, and when I would see them at the football games or things like that, they would tell me they weren't doing too much, and that bothered me that they didn't have outlets or, or things things in our county uh, that they could you know, grow and, and become young adults also. So how does the garden play into that? Uh, the garden gives everybody an opportunity to come here no matter what your disability is. Uh, if you make mistakes here, we work with you there. Um, if you want to learn new things, we're here for that. And you know, you don't have to stay here forever. If this is a stepping stone and that super important time from when you get out of school into what you really want to do, you can learn skills at any job that can carry over to all kinds of employment in our county. I met Cinda earlier. She works here and seems to love her job. And she says she loves working with the special needs adults. Adults. And she says it, it, it gives her purpose. She feels like God sent her here. And so it's a beautiful feeling just being here. Yeah, I think a lot of people look at individuals with disabilities and focus on what they can't do. But someone like Cinda now is here and she's seeing like us teachers see every day all the things they can do. So when you realize all the things they can do, you know, that's just like, wow, I, I can really teach this young adult a lot of things that's gonna help them in their life. And it makes your job more important because you're now growing people and not just plants or flowers or things. So obviously the community can come here and go shopping. The money goes to help special needs adults. But this is only part of the dream. Tell mm -hmm. us about the rest of it. That well, might happen across the street. Yeah, just like uh, you know, we want them to have jobs and employment and understand how important that is. Life skills and learning how to live on your own or in a community uh, is important. Also, you know, what is expected of you, what you need to do um, daily to make things happen in your own life, and what you're responsible for. So yeah, having a place where if, if you didn't have transportation, you could live and walk over here and work, have a community of their own um, that together that understanding of taking care of each other the same way we do um, in our communities all around the county. Finally, you need more volunteers here. You not only need more special needs adults to come and learn and grow, but you need more volunteers and help and money. A grant writer. Oh, a grant writer would do great things for us. Uh, there's a lot of grants out there, but we've learned you really have to know how to write them and know specifically what you're asking for. So that would be a big piece of the puzzle and would help us grow and, you know, serve uh, young adults even more. And right now we're going to meet a parent, Lori Suggs, who's going to tell us what this program has meant to her daughter, Jordan. So Diane, this has meant so much to me, my family, and to Jordan. Um, for Jordan, it gives her a sense of purpose. She enjoys getting up every day and coming to work. And Mondays and Sundays, of course, those are her days off. And she's quick to tell me those are her days off. But on the other days, she will tell me, Mom, I have to get up and I have to go to work so that I can wait on customers. Some of the things that I've seen her growth in has been, you know, well, for Jordan, she's on the autism spectrum. So the social interaction is, is not always up to par. So one of the things that I've gotten to see is just how much she has grown socially. 
and her willingness to approach customers when they come in, ask them what their names are and tell them what her name is. And I was here Saturday working for Cinda to give you an example and, and I thought she would stay at home, but she wanted to get up and come to work also. So we weren't here maybe 15 minutes and a couple walked in and she said, hi, my name's Jordan, what's your name? And his name was Wayne, and she said, Wayne, let me take you to the greenhouse. So that oh, is nice. huge. That is huge for someone who is on the spectrum. And, you know, for me as a parent, when Jordan was finishing high school, well, we just didn't know what she was going to be able to do. For, for those people who are on the spectrum, a lot of times just the simple, um, even if it's a routine job, for instance, like bagging groceries or something, you still have to do that with a time constraint. You know, you gotta get those groceries in the bag and you gotta get them in a timely manner and take care of things. But for someone on the spectrum, even that can be stressful. But you come out here and just look around, it's beautiful, it's peaceful. There's, there, the stress is low and she just she a gets to it is a great environment and she gets to see the whole process of growing something and taking care of something now you too work for daisy elementary I and do. you are a kindergarten teacher so you have your hands full by day oh, yes. but i want you to teach the parents who are watching right now one good lesson in why they need to have their uh, young adults with disabilities okay. come here and be involved that is one thing that we we need, we would love to grow this program and to involve more participants. So anyone from uh, 18 to, it doesn't matter how old you are, if you feel like you would fit in here, then we would love to have these people. You know, most people can stay in school until they're 21. And for people around here, unfortunately, there are just not that many job opportunities available. So for us, our board, we were determined that we wanted to give this group of people a purpose, um, an opportunity to contribute to society and to, and to be involved in their community. And the growth that we've seen has just been phenomenal. So what are the statistics of our community um, in the way of special needs adults? Well, Diane, you know Horry County's growing every single day, the new people, and that, that brings in more people with special needs and disabilities. A couple years ago, when I presented at Coastal Carolina University, the statistic then, and I'm sure it's changed now with the growth that we've sure. experienced, was there will be over 4,000 people in Horry County alone who will be considered homeless when their parents or caregivers pass away. So that's a huge population that we, that are gonna need help. So parents, it's time yes. to do something about it. It is time. You know, mm -hmm. let's get these young adults help. That is a great way to end mm -hmm. it, Lori. And I wanna remind everyone that the folks here also have vegetables. You can come here and buy vegetables in season and look for them at the Loris Farmer's Market. Lori, thank you so very much. I think it's a beautiful dream come true. Thank you. Giving Hope Gardens. Come enjoy all the folks here. Thank and you. the plants, too. A fun family night and a farmer's market all combined in one. That's what's coming up next. Don't go away. The bedrock principle that drives our law firm is our unyielding dedication to working for the best interests of our clients. The whole staff of the firm were very welcoming and nurturing to us. Everyone in the family was cared for. This firm has made us feel so welcome and comforted, stepping us through and making us feel like family. We will take care of you and make sure that you're treated fairly and treated properly. Good news, friends. 
there's now an evening farmer's market in our community, more specifically, downtown Myrtle Beach. Meet Samantha Tipton. Well, it's been years since I last interviewed her. She's had two children since then, <laughs> and yeah. she heads up the Wakama Co-op. And that means she's over all the farmer's markets for our community, in Ori anyway, right? Yeah. And one in Georgetown, yes. Good, let's talk about the farmer's markets yeah. before we talk about the evening one. Where are the farmer's markets this summer? Yeah. We have seven locations this season. On Tuesdays, you'll be able to find us in Surfside. On Thursdays, we'll be in Little River, and then we'll be down here on Thursday evenings. On Fridays, we'll be in North Myrtle Beach, and we have three locations on Saturday. So it'll be Conway, Georgetown, and Valor Park that's in Market Common. And I heard there's a little surprise coming up in Merle's Inlet in Yeah, June. we've got a, a pop-up market coming up that we're really excited about. That'll be June 27th. It's going to be a Sunday. It's going to be Merle's Inlet uh, outside of Pet Galley. It's going to be an evening market. It's so exciting that we finally have an evening farmer's market for those of us who work because even a lot of people work on Saturdays and they just weren't able to get the fresh produce. Absolutely, we're really excited about this opportunity to be able to have this ambiance outside of Grand Strand Brewing Company. We got this great opportunity. Um, it's a really great energy and atmosphere out here and we're open for people to come after work and have a beverage and shop the market. Speaking of energy, we're hearing lots of energy right now because yeah. We're taping during bike week, <laughs> but the bikers are coming and they're enjoying the farmer's they market. They are. And I see here that Grand Strand Brewery has really set up a family party Thursday night atmosphere. Very family friendly. They've got like chicken tenders and juice boxes and it's a really great accompaniment to what we have to offer at our markets too. And I saw cornhole and horseshoes mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of things that people are doing. Let's talk about the different vendors because there's a variety. So at this market and any of our locations, you can find a variety of vendors. First and foremost, we're gonna have farmers. So you're gonna have your fresh fruits and your vegetables. You're gonna have artisan vendors. So those are gonna be things that are locally made. People are making those with their own hands before they sell them to you. And it's usually the person who made them that's also selling it to you. And then you're gonna have some craft food items, different baked goods or candies, or maybe kombucha or some elderberry and some even hot and prepared food too. I saw all sorts of artisans really enjoying the market atmosphere, and that adds to the flavor of it all. Will there be music? We hope to have music from time to time. We did at our opening last week. We encourage any entertainers who want to be part of this to reach out to us. We would love to have live music going the whole time. It was a great atmosphere with it last week. So you've already said you need some more entertainers, but uh, you probably need more vendors, farmers as well. Absolutely. We accept vendors throughout our season. So any farmers, uh, makers, artisans, or food vendors can apply on our website. If you go to our website, there's a drop down for vendors and you can apply online. It has all of our guidelines right there. And our farmers markets continue through what month? Through the end of October. These are all weekly through the end of October. I love it, including this evening including one. Including this evening one, yeah. It's gonna be really great. Don't forget, every single Thursday night through the end of October. It's a hot new farmer's market for the Myrtle Beach area at Grand Strand Brewery. And coming up right now, we're gonna meet the manager of Grand Strand Brewery and find out what's happening inside. Well, I just found out he's not just the manager. He is the owner. This is Clayton, and Clayton, everyone in Myrtle Beach says you have been so cooperative already, and your partnership with the city has been glorious. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been very welcoming. Um, the city of Myrtle Beach um, has done a lot of great work around us, and we've kind of run a parallel path with the brewery and the park, and now we have this experience in downtown Myrtle Beach that is drawing people to the area that otherwise probably weren't going to come down here. Um, and we've got a lot of families and we have a lot of children and we've got a lot of beer lovers and so it's been a lot of fun. We'll talk about food in just a moment, but I want to talk about beer since that's what you do best. And why are these vats named after the seven dwarfs? Uh, well, the math worked out kind of uh, conveniently and so we have uh, eight tanks that are named. Uh, and this is all part of our cellar, which is where fermentation takes place. And we just figured that since the brewery was so exposed, it would create another kind of conversation point. And it's kind of just a, a, a laughable thing that we've added to the brewery and trying to take ourselves too seriously. But is there a Snow White? There is a Snow White. So Snow White uh, is the hot liquor tank over there. So that's just hot water that we use for brewing. And a couple more are strategically named. We've got Dopey down there. That's the smallest one. 
Happy is what's called our bright tank. That's beer that's ready to be packaged. It's happy beer. It's going through the fermentation process. And then grumpy right here, uh, because we do not like doing a process called dry hopping that tank because of this light. So we hit our head on that a lot. So. Uh, some of them are kind of conveniently and strategically named. So what is your concept here? I mean, tell me, I don't really know a lot about breweries. It's not, to be honest, it's not a unique concept. So there's, uh, you know, 5,000, no, excuse me, 8,000 breweries, uh, over 8,000 breweries in the United States. And towns and cities and states all over our country have their local breweries. They have their neighborhood breweries. And, and, and it's part of the culture of that particular area. And Myrtle Beach, we really didn't have much beer culture. Uh, and so we're basically just replicating a concept. So we figured that this was the perfect place um, to put a brewery, to be an anchor for an area that we see so much potential in, and to also serve this kind of need for the local craft beer experience, which is communal, which is family oriented, which is uh, about fun and good vibes and a relaxed atmosphere and all the things that you know we grew up in the beer industry experiencing and that Myrtle Beach kind of lacked. So there was a need and we wanted to fill that need. Not anymore. It's here. You're here. Yeah. Now, what do you think so far is your best selling brew? Without a doubt, it's a beer called Airbrush. It is a hazy IPA, kind of a modern New England style IPA. Uh, and on any given day, that's our best selling beer. Occasionally, we've got another beer that'll creep up and, 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 uh, and take the top spot for a day. But as far as week to week, month to month, that's been our top seller. What's on the menu? So we don't know anything about running a kitchen, full, full disclosure. We've been in the beer business a long time. And um, so we partnered with a guy named Sean Cobo. Sean owns two restaurants in Conway, a restaurant called The Crafty Rooster yeah. and another newer concept called Shanti's. And so we figured that we needed food to be part of the experience, complement to the beer. And it's basic bar food with some shareables. And we'll develop that over time as we get feedback. Um, but. It, again, it just enhances the experience, allows people to hang around for another beer, uh, and, 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 and allows us to focus on beer while he focuses on food. And we all do what we do best. So other than this big Thursday night through the end of October farmer's market yep. that's very family oriented, what else do you advise us to look into? So we're a music destination. Uh, so every Friday and Saturday night from four to eight, we have live music from predominantly local bands uh, out on a little portion of Nance Plaza that we've dubbed The Lawn. And that's something that you can always count on when you come down here. Now we do have other music program throughout the week occasionally plugged in there. We are looking to partner with local kind of uh, running and cycling and fitness groups, people that like to stay fit so that they can enjoy their beer type, type folks, uh, where we're gonna do pub runs and, and bicycle rides to and from the brewery and things like that. But you can always count on us having live music on Friday and Saturday afternoons. Clayton, best wishes to you, my friend. Thanks so much. Thanks for taking interest in our in our project and in this area and promoting downtown Myrtle Beach and the brewery. I'll you better it. believe it. We love Myrtle Beach. Awesome. Thank you. Next month on Inside Out, we'll meet a world record juggler. We'll visit a nonprofit coffee bar. We'll add class to your flip flops. We'll meet up with Vocal Editions Craig McBroom. And we'll meet some cows that look like Oreo cookies. It's all coming up on the July Inside Out, right here on HTC. Inside Out is presented by HTC. This is life. Connect with it. And Magnolia's at 26th for good old-fashioned Southern comfort food, where mama eats. Along with the McGuire Law Firm. Be kind today and tomorrow.